You're watching the Seafood News Weekly video brought to you by Comtel, which will be receiving a complete redesign in 2020. Subscribers who utilize Comtel to track market quotations, analyze trends, and stay on top of key industry news will see a host of new features. Streamlined navigation, customizable dashboards, filtering options, quick access to your favorite reports, and more will make Comtel an even more valuable tool for those impacted by the protein markets. I'm seafood market reporter Lauren Castiglione. And I'm news assistant Andrea Torsiello. In today's top story, the Association of Genuine Alaska Pollock Producers had their first annual meeting earlier this week. The meeting focused on getting the sustainability message out to consumers using science-based information, state-of-the-art tech, and industry brands to convey the story. The Alaska Pollock fishery, the largest sustainable fishery in the world, one of the top 20 most nutritious foods on the planet, and traceable from boat to plate. Alaska's Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands has produced over 1 million metric tons of pollock each year for decades. Pair that with innovative product forms and presentations, pollock producers see their product taking a seat at the big protein table alongside beef, pork, and chicken. Thanks, Andrea. In other news, the U.S. House of Representatives passed bipartisan legislation to unlock the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund and increase investment in America's ports. Oregon Representative Peter DeFazio authored the legislation that will aid in funding critical harbor and port projects, helping ensure the money intended to dredge the nation's coastal and inland commercial ports would actually go towards harbor maintenance. DeFazio cited his conversations with fishermen and other maritime workers about the critical need for safe and well-maintained harbors and ports. Thanks, Lauren. The European Commission announced the public of Ecuador will receive a yellow card warning over its lack of action to fight illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. The decision to send a warning was based on shortcomings regarding Ecuador's ability to comply with standards under international law of the sea as flag, port, and market state. The EC urged Ecuador to step up its action to ensure fish entering its market do not stem from IUU fishing. The yellow card does not affect trade between the EU and Ecuador. The yellow card works as a warning and it provides Ecuador the chance to react and take steps to fix the situation within a reasonable time frame. And finally, the king crab market continues to see what feels like constant upwards pricing pressure. Most sizes are either sitting at all-time highs or at 52-week highs. Both Russian red and golden king crab are seeing upward pricing pressure on all sizes, in particular on the larger count sizes of reds. This upwards pricing pressure is happening alongside higher imports out of Russia, specifically on red and blue king crab. Alaskan golden king crab does historically demand a premium over Russian golden king crab. Currently, the Alaskan market on golden king crab is trending about 25 to 40 cents above the Russian golden king crab market on 16 to 20 count crab. Market participants will continue to watch as we move further into the fourth quarter. And that's the guacamole. Be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. And don't forget to listen to a new episode of the Seafood News podcast released on SoundCloud and iTunes every Monday. Thanks for watching.